Ah, para ese. Hmm. Are you using fan? Hailing? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. I want to know. Are you using fan? Because uh, I hear some wind from of you. Sound? Yes, I use pen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Well, we're hearing it. We're hearing it. Um, yeah. Recording in progress. All right, let's try again. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's try again. Um, all right, so back to what we were talking about. Let me share my screen again. So how do you use, um, you know, an op different operating systems, right? Stuff like that uh, to Sam's question, right? So if I was the IT manager at Quincy College, now here's a classroom at Quincy College, for example. Each of these computers works differently from the other. They're all, they're all different. So let's say you want Microsoft Word, right, May? If you're Microsoft Word on one computer, you have to install it on each of the computers one at a time. If you want Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, if you want some kind of program, you have to install it one at a time on all the 30 computers. Sam, are you following me? Yes, I am. Now, if you had a virtual environment, right, all you need is when you log on to this computer or any of these computers, you will just click, for example, you will just click something like, um, where's that um, Oracle? If we had um, virtual, uh, if we had Oracle on all those computers, right, you will just go into your virtual box, double click on whatever program you wanted to go to. If it was Windows, you want to go to Windows, right, or you want to go to Kali, it's going to be like a central operation. So we only install one set of programs and everyone can just log into that set of programs from whatever computer they are. So in a sense, you may not have private computers. Everything is going to be central, like a central location. I don't know if that makes some sense to you. So it, it, it sounds like it's the same kind of operation as a server, right? Yes, absolutely. 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 In fact, it has, I mean, anything that can, basically you're going to install the virtual manager on a server so that a lot of people can access it. Because right now, this is installed on my computer. The only way you can see it is because of Zoom, but you can't really access it. If we put it on a server in an office or in the school or somewhere, everyone can access it. So everyone can work, you know, with, a set, with central programs. Is it gone off again? Oh, it's fine. Oh, okay, because you did this. <laughs> okay, so so that might so there's a lot of benefits there, 
And again, you know, I find benefits because sometimes you want to demonstrate. And also, um, in a production environment, like on the job in a company, let's say, you, let's say your company, you produce or you manufacture software. You want to test your software, right? You want to test it on different operating systems. How does it look like on a Windows? How does it look like on a Linux or on a Mac? You don't have to have a lot of hardware, like invest in buying actual machines. You know, I mean that's going to be so expensive. You know, right now I can show you, I can show you my, uh, that's my Windows. I can log in right there. Those are my kids, like five years ago, six years ago. <laughs> All right. So I can show you the Windows, show you some examples. Show you Linux. Uh, show you some examples. That's the benefit of it. I don't have to log on and log off. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Ling, what do you think? Does that make sense or no? You don't understand. You're confused. <laughs> okay, Ling just laughed, which means I don't know what you guys are talking about. Okay. You well, can let's also go use on. Just to study. Uh, uh, for example, I don't have a computer with Linux. Uh, I wouldn't have to buy one computer just to study Linux. Exactly. You're absolutely right. You can just install Oracle and then find um, the file to install Linux. And it's all, you know, online, all for free. Right? So, so if you look at it, right, uh, here is... Here is Windows 10, where well, you guys know what Windows 10 is like. Or well, here is Linux, right? Is it very different from, from uh, Windows or Mac? Is it very different? Yes. Yeah. Well, it, it looks different, but it has all the different doc. It has documents, desktop, it has home, it has trash, it has videos, pictures. You know, you can go online, do whatever you want to do, just like a Windows computer. Okay, so back to the book. So what he was saying there is, so all the different services that are installed, right, that are installed on, on Linux, right, the desktop, the graphical user interface, and all that stuff, says the combination right here, the combination of all these features is referred to as what, Anu? The combination of all these features that are installed is referred to as a distribution, right? Distro. As a distribution or distro for short, distro, right? Or distribution. So right here it says, there have been hundreds or thousands of Linux distributions created, right? You have a lot of different Linux distributions that have been created. Um, so, so right here, it says most distributions use what is called the bash shell, right? Bash shell. Okay. Now we go back, we go over here to versions, right? A version. So let's see what a version is. Um, So one developer might add lots of services, and uh, other developers might keep it, you know, just create different types of um, services. Now, some versions are 32-bit, and others are 64-bit, right? Just like your Windows, right? If you do a search for your, on your Windows, and you type... Um, uh, say system, for example, you type, I think it's system information, system information. Okay, no, this is not, uh, so I want to go to, yeah, it might tell you, all right, right, if you do, if you type system information, it's going to tell you here, uh, the system type right here, 64, version 64, you have 64 and 32 on, you know, on a Windows, same thing as a Mac. Sorry, same thing as a Linux, right? So, so the versions, so don't mix it up. So distribution 
right? It says distribution refers to all the different features, right, on that Linux um, machine. The version refers to 32 or 64 bit. Now it says many distributions have a graphical user interface, GUI. What's a GUI? Here's a GUI, graphical user interface. You can see different icons here. You can see the files. You can go to downloads, the interface, right? All the icons, all the buttons, everything you can, you can see and move around. That's the interface, how it looks like, the colors, right? The colors, the different programs and applications that are available there. That's the graphical user interface, right? Um, all right, so, so it says right here that there are probably about 350 current and well-known Linux distributions, right? And here are examples. So right here, like any proper operating system, Linux distributions have names, right? Ubuntu, Linux, Linux Mint, Debian, KDE, Red Hat. The one I have is referred to as a Kali Linux, right there. Kali, K-A-L-I, Kali Linux. So uh, distributions, right? Distributions. So if we go back uh, and into that question, what's the likely answer? Uh, it's a, a C, kernel. Kernel, all right. Linux is defined as a kernel, which is also the core of an operating system, right? So don't confuse it with distribution, which is all the services on that machine, not the version. The version is 32 or 64 bit. Um, the kernel is what Linux is originally, the core of an operating system, right? Okay, so that's okay, kernel. Uh, so uh, to try to be clearer even than that, if I, would it be true to say versions include many distributions? Each version, either okay, let's 32 or 64 would include uh, M more than one distribution. Okay, so let's put let's put well yeah okay so let's put it this way right. Is it, uh, let me take out all this. Uh, let me take out all this highlights so I can be more specific here. One second. Okay, so right here, it says some versions, right? Yep. So when we talk about versions, you only have two versions, just two. Yeah. Thirty-two bit and 64-bit, right? Now, the next part says many distributions, right? Yep. So all distributions, actually, all distributions are either 32 or 64-bit. Oh, okay. Right? So all distributions have a version. Okay. Right? So, for example, if you say you born to Linux, then you want to say, is that a 64-bit or a 32-bit uh, for that distribution? So you want to Linux is a distribution. They want to know what version, just like Windows, right? What yep. version of uh, what, what Windows, Windows is generally referred to as operating system. So you might say you have a Windows 7, Windows, you know, Windows 5, Windows 10. Now you want to say, okay, so that's the Windows. What version? Then you say 64 bit. So it's kind of similar, right? So they're all, broken down into two versions. Whatever distribution you have, the two versions of it. And now, to make matters worse, right here it says, most distributions use what is called a shell, <laughs> right? So, so you have distributions that have a version, distributions have what you have a shell, right? Um, as, as well as Linux itself being a kernel. So I know it's, you know, that all these terms, like, okay, this is crazy, you know, for the exam, right, for the exam, you just need to understand the definitions, right? So when we say the name of the products, for example, you're born to Linux, Linux Mint, 
um, Debian. Then that's how, when you look at what are some names of Mac computers, we're going to see some in a second. Windows, you have some of those, right? Now, all these operating systems, they all have versions, right? And they have um, some core that make them work, okay? All right, let's go on. So that's um, right there. All right, number 12. Any volunteers for question 12, May? I think we looked at this uh, the last class, right? Number 12. Yeah, number 10. You need to queue a process in Windows with the utilities. Utility. You need utility. Is, utility just means what, what should you, what tool on the computer should you use? If a program is running and it's taking up your resources and you want to stop it, where do you go to? Remember when we, um, when we did this, I kind of, we did a search, right? Did we do a search? And we went to task manager, right? Uh, so on your, actually, well, we first of all went to uh, control, alt, delete. So if, on your keyboard, if you press control, alt, delete, may you're going to see these options, and then you go to task manager, right? On your keyboard, control, alt, delete. On your keyboard, right? Control, control, alt, that's right, right here. Control, alt, delete on your keyboard, okay? It's not all together like this. I mean, you have control, alt on the, on the left side and your delete on the other side, right? So you have to go something like this. So all the buttons are not, ex you go like that, <laughs> right? Like a crazy person, you just do that, something like that. Okay, so when you do that, it's going to bring you here, and you want to go to Task Manager. Okay. So when you pull up Task Manager, right, May, you mm -hmm. see all these programs running on my computer. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, you see the virtual box that we opened, right? Virtual box. It's taking up a lot of power on my computer. Okay, so the question that is asking us is, uh, what's the question again? You need to kill a process. You see, you see, all the activity on your computer is referred to as processes. So right now, uh, I have, you see right there, it has processes. You see that tab? Processes. So VirtualBox is open, Zoom is open, Firefox is open. Uh, Adobe, I have all this thing, all these programs open on my computer. They're all called processes, right? All the different activities. Your computer is like very busy all the time. Just like your brain, you're always thinking of everything. Your child, you know, the food, the money, a job, you know, you got to sleep, then you have to wake up, you have to make food, you have to go to class, you have to deal with Sam and Professor Banjo every day, like, oh, I have assignments. Your brain is like hot all the time, right? So yes. that's how the computer is. So now if I want to stop some of these programs from running, for like VirtualBox, I can right click on VirtualBox, right? Right click and go to end task. So see what happens. End task. See what happens, right? So here's my virtual box right here. Here is, uh, no, not this one. Here's my virtual box. Here's my Kali Linux right here. They're all here. Here's my Windows. They're all here. Now see what happens, May, when I right click here and I click end task. Okay? Now, let's see what happens. You see, all those programs are going away. So the Kali has been removed. Okay, it's going. Uh, it's asking me to shut. 
Let's let's go back there. Let me see. Let me see what happened there. Okay, it's still running. Uh, give it a minute. Okay, right here. Let me uh, let me do this. Because sometimes they have different processes that are attached. So I still have some of it here. Okay, right here. Let me click again and test. Okay. So, okay. Then one more. Because, you know, there were three processes attached to, Cal to the uh, virtual box. There was Linux and Windows. So the win Windows has been removed. And the Linux has been removed. Now I'm going to remove this last one here. Uh, so let's let me find it. I have to find the process. Actually, everything has been killed. If you see there, right? Everything has been aborted. So it's no longer okay. Right here, I saw it right here. Okay, it's kind of it's hiding. <laughs> so I got to find it. Uh, Okay, right here. All right, so I found it right here. I'm going to end the task, and now it's gone. You see that it's gone from my computer, right? Yeah. You see that it's gone? Yeah. And chat, that mean it's delete it or just close it? Just <laughs> kill it. Just, 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 so no just, just turn off the program. You turn off the... No, software. not turn off. You, you kill the program, basically. That's what it's called. You kill it. So the program is going to shut down and close. But you, but it's it's not gone from your computer. You can open it. No, again. no, no, no. You didn't delete it. Not deleting. That is to delete. If you delete the program, then it's gone from your computer. If you kill the process, you stop it from working. You can always open it up again. For example, here is the virtual box, right? I can open it up again. That's it right there. But if it's taking up a lot of my resources, I can, the word is kill it. Okay, well, uh, I know that in, in real life, in actual, in real life, if I, <laughs> if you kill something, it's gone forever, right? But in computer terms, in computer terms, if you kill a process, it means that you stop it from working. You can get it back, but you stop it from working temper, you know, until you need it. So, oh, wait. so, so, so Right. Yeah, you just close the window, that's fine, right? <laughs> if, Say that again, May? So, so why, why we need to kill the process? If you, you start okay. closing it, just close, close it. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question, right? Now, sometimes um, you may not know why your computer is slowing down. Okay, right now I know that I have oracle or virtual uh, virtual box so i can just close it myself because i know it's oh it's there but sometimes something might be running in the background of your computer in the back of the computer and you don't know what it is right if you come to the task manager and look through the list then you might see you know what is taking up so much um power or memory right now because for example if I look at this, um, um, let's say, service host right here, service host or Windows, you know, there's some things that I don't even know what it is, right? I can't really tell what program it is. So if I feel like it's taking up a lot of my resources, I can just kill it. Okay. You know, and then maybe to just, you know, my computer can work better. So you don't you don't always have to do it. It's just maybe once in a while if you need to do that, right? But generally, you can just close the program. Just click on the X and just you know click on the X and just close the program. Yes. But if you don't know what the program is, you can go into the you know into the task manager, find the process and kill it. <laughs> All right. So if you see here, if we uh, check right here, you can see that it tells you here how to find the task manager. Right here, the process management, you see that process management, it says right here, every task, right, or nearly every task running on a computer is called a process. 
process, right? Okay, this is what I said, right? This includes background processes, things that you don't know about that just happen in the background, okay? As well as all your applications and files. And the way to open Task Manager is to go to Control, Alt, Delete, okay? So Task Manager manages all the different activities, right? I mean, in fact, if you go back there, if I go back to Task Manager, if you click on Performance, right, this tab, Performance, you can see like a, a graph, a chart of how your computer is, you know, the activity there, right? You can see right here, I mean, my computer is very busy, obviously, just like yours, because we're on Zoom and all this stuff. So it's using up about 40% about right, of the resources. So it goes up and down, up and down, up and down a little bit. A lot of activity going on there. And you can see right now, I have about 224 processes, a lot of stuff happening. May, can you think of 224 things at the same time? Like, you know, all the, so your computer is pretty busy. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go on. Ling, next question for you. Number 12. Number 12? Number 13, 13. <laughs> you just love COVID. Uh, I fell from the world work director to the project. Like a folder. A directory is a folder. Oh, the project's the director on your Windows PC. What happened to the file on the hard drive? Okay, <laughs> that's what it's, here's what it means, right? Mm -hmm. So here is my desk, uh, here is my, so a, a directory, right? A directory is like a folder. So. You see all these folders here, Lynn, all these different folders, mm -hmm. right? These are all directories. Oh. That's the word. It's a folder. Okay. Why don't they just say folder, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's a folder. So the question is, if I, let's say, let me go, for example, I go to schools. Let me go to Quincy, for example. Okay. So I have all these directories or folders, right? So here's the question. The question is, you just copy the file from the work directory to the project directory, right? So something like this. If I copy this, um, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say Canvas training task, right? Lynn? Yes. If I copy this right here, I go to copy, mm -hmm. right? And I put it in uh, QuickBooks. I paste it in QuickBooks. I'm going to paste right here in QuickBooks, right? So I copy it from Canvas training task and I paste it in QuickBooks, okay? Mm. I, I paste it here. The question is what, what happened, happened to the file on the hard drive, right? Yeah. Just by copying one file to the other. Did anything happen? It says... Nothing, or B, the file was removed from the work. Was the file removed? No. No. Okay. Says C, the file was not moved, but a new pointer record was created. D, the file was, was copied to a new location on the hard drive and was associated with the project directory. So all these options there, right? What happened? So let's see something here. Let's see if we can find, okay, so look right here. Let's talk about copying files, right? That's the, that's the question. Yes. So when you copy a file, uh, you copy the file to the clipboard. Okay, look at the right there. So when you copy the file, it says if you want to place the file somewhere else, you need to paste it, 
there. The original file is not changed in any way. Um, okay? Now, what else happens here? It says, um, if you paste the file somewhere else, right here, if you paste the file somewhere else, the operating system will create a new version of the file with the same name in the new location. It also creates an additional version of it on the hard drive. So now you have two versions on the hard drive. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you copy, the original location is still there, but now you have another location, mm -hmm. right? So there are two locations for that same file, two different locations for that same file. So, let's see the options again for that question. Last one. So what's the best answer here? You just copied the file from the work directory to the project directory. What happened to the file on the hard drive? Uh, the file was copied to a new location on the hard drive and was suspended with the project vector. So D. D. Everyone agrees? Is that D? Is it D or A? What do you guys think? Is it D or A? D. D. Why, why is A? What do you mean? Nothing changed. Is it A? Is it nothing? Or is it D? Or is it B? Or is it C? What do you guys D. think? A, B, C, D, D. Ling is right. Yeah. Ling says D. So Ling is right? Okay, Lin let's be right. sure. Let's see. Okay. So Ling, Alex is supporting you that you're right. So let's find out. So question 13, we go to Appendix B. All right, so let's see. Lena, are you right? Yes. Yes. Lena is right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, so when you copy a file, the original file remains intact. It doesn't change. And a new version of that file is created somewhere else on the hard drive, right? So the new version is associated with the new folder, right? So it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't move, but now it belongs to a new folder, right? Or it's joined to a new folder, right? Okay, very good. Good job, Lynn. Thank you. So let's go back to chapter four. Next question, uh, Kaush, are you there? Did Kaush come today? Yes, sorry, I, I came a little bit late, around seven minutes late. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, so uh, next question for you. That is question 14. Okay. 14. How many subdirectories are you allowed to create within a single directory and OS? So we talked about this before, right? A directory is a folder, mm -hmm. right? So how many folders can you put inside a folder, right? If you have a folder, test folder, mm. how many folders can you put in this folder? Remember, we did, we did a, an yes. example of that, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, so. The, 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 how many folders? The, 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 so let's see, what was, what was the answer uh, that we found? Was it 32,064 unlimited? Or it depends on the operating system? Uh, it depends on the operating system. Some operating system has 32,000, some have 64,000. It's like, it's dependent on the operating system. 
All right, so let's see. All right, so look right here. So Linux uh, has can do 32,000. Yes. Um, some other Linux versions can do 64,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it depends on the operating system that you're dealing with. Okay. I think that's what that is. Let me see. All right. Question 15. Arch, that's for you. The combination of Linux-based files that get released as a product is called what? We just talked about that. So what's that? Distribution. A. Distribution. Okay. That is distribution. Okay. 16. Anu, that's for you? 16. Yeah, okay. Which of the following file system does not have built-in security? All right, so let's see this built-in security about file systems, right? Here's what it means by built-in security. So if I look at my C drive, here's my C drive. Now, we said before, right, uh, most of the Windows computers um, have NTFS, file system, right? NT, um, NTFS. Now, if you look at the tabs here, all the tabs you see up here, right? You see that you have a security tab that allows you to grant permissions, for example. Maybe some people can look at the file and other people cannot look at the file, right? There's security there for those uh, for that file operating system for that uh, file system. Now let's see some of the other systems here. So let's see security built-in security. All right. Okay. So right here. We can see that answer right here. Security. So most file systems have built-in security, which is referred to as its set of permissions, right? Permissions. Maybe you can allow some people, for example, this folder I just created, right? This test folder I just created, if you right click on the folder and you go to properties, right? If I go to security here, right? I can say, for example, I can go and edit. I can say, for example, this, this uh, name here, tbench, I can deny access, right, to the folder. It has permissions. I can allow some people to view the folder or I can deny access, right? That's what it means by security. It's like your house, right? Does everyone have the key to your apartment, Anu? Yes. Everybody has the key to your apartment? <laughs> no. Everybody? Not me, not no. me, I don't have it. I don't have one. I don't have, you didn't give us the key. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Anna, you haven't sent us the key. If you send us the key, we'll come to your house. And we might just spend the night there or something. Come to your house, eat all your food. Come on, please. So, does everybody have the key to your house? No, I'm, I'm telling you about my family members. They, we will have a key. Yeah. Only Do we family. get keys? Yeah, so, so only, only the people that you give permission, right, yes, yes, will yes. have the key to the house. Yeah. So that's so that's the idea here. So the question is, what file, what file, uh, what file system? Uh, where is it? Which of the file systems have that kind of security? So let's see the file systems here. Let's look at this FAT system, FAT system. All right. So. All right, so here's some examples, right, of different file systems. Uh, you have the FAT system. The FAT system is 
file allocation table, okay? You have FAT32, you have NTFS, which is what most computers have right now. You have HFS, EXT3, EXT4, XFS, different versions. So let's see what it says here. Um, FAT, the FAT system, it says it's um, obsolete. No security, no security, right? FAT32, no security. So the FAT system has no security. So if you look at like your the windows... Roses hate the FAT system. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I would say it's about development, right? It's development. Technology develops, right? It's the development of technology. It wasn't necessary before, but now it is, right? It's like when you had, um, when you had, uh, what you might call it? You have floppy disk, right? So Alex, the people who made floppy disk, did they hate, hate everybody? Like, we don't want you guys to save large files. No, that was what they had at that time. Right? So with time, technology is going to advance how we do things. For example, Alex, one day you might call an Uber, right? And when the Uber comes, there's nobody inside driving the car. <laughs> It's called a self-driving car. Will you get inside, Alex, into a self-driving car? No, we can't hear you. Yes. No. Oh, it's time for change new computer. Yeah, probably. No, it's not my computer. It's my computer is fine. Yeah, you know, you can, I, we can listen to you. You can hear me now? Yes, yes. Maybe yeah, my it's not my computer. My computer, my computer is solid. Trust me. <laughs> Maybe net, uh, there is net issues. Yeah, sometimes they have a power outage, the heat is too much, or the weather is bad or something, right? Okay, so let's go on. So it's about technology, right? It's technology, uh, advancement of technology. So the FAT system had no security. Uh, the NTFS has security, like what we use right now. So if you go to your Windows, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you go to your Windows, right, and you look at the properties of your Windows, if your Windows says here, FAT, F-A-T, then you're not going to see any security options there in a FAT system. But that's older computers. That's older operating systems. Not anything right now. Okay, um, then let's see the EXT3. So the EXT3 or EXT4, this is a current Linux file system, right? Um, so it looks to me like the only file system uh, with no security is going to be the FAT, oh. the FAT file mm -hmm. system. Professor, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what is the difference of uh, FAT and FAT32? It's not, it's okay. The same. Uh, that's a good question. So if you go right here, up here, you can see it tells us a few things here. So right here, you see it says, uh, it says, over the years, FAT was upgraded to FAT16 and FAT32. Right? Mm -hmm. So what does it do? Uh, it provides 
see additional functionality such as larger maximum partition sizes. Uh, let's see something else that it does here. Um, uh, let's see something else it has here. Let's go down here, FAT32. Okay. So I think we got to find some information here. Okay, look at this here. So in older computers, right, the fax in the fax system, look at it right here. Look at what it says. Couch, look at what it says here. It says in the older fax system, right, your file name, it says it was limited to 8.3. What does 8.3 mean? 8.3 means that if your file name, your file name cannot be longer than eight characters. Mm -hmm. So it says your file name had to be eight characters. So for example, uh, let's say Quincy, if I want to write Quincy College, uh, comp let's say computer, okay. or actually let's say com com TIA class. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not going to work because it's too long. Yeah. In the fact system, it has to be only Eight characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, period, and I say maybe a PDF, something like that. Mm -hmm. So the FAT system was, re it restricted how long your file name could be, right? Mm -hmm. But um, with the FAT32 and all those other FAT systems that came after that, they removed those, those uh, they mm -hmm. removed, I think now your, fi your file name can be as long as, 256 characters. Mm -hmm. That's like a very long file name, right? Mm -hmm. Like blah, 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 dot PDF. Well, you have to remove all the, you have to remove all these characters, but you can have a very long file name dot PDF. So those are some examples. And then things like security as things that it, so well, the whole fact system anyway didn't have security. Mm -hmm. um, so, so okay, that's what it says right here also. So file systems have limitations on how long a file name can be or what characters, right? What characters can be used? Some file systems are case sensitive. So for example, if you have a file name that is comtia.pdf or you have comp say comp t i a or comp t i a dot p d f well it's going to be um, a different file name because the cases are different right but in windows it doesn't you know it's the same it doesn't matter in windows right but in some systems you have to especially when you deal with websites and stuff like that right web files and you put stuff on servers, right? Then you want to be sure about case, things being case sensitive, uppercase, lowercase, and all that. All right? Okay, thank you. So the answer is what? Anu, the answer is what? Question uh, 16. Uh, so does not have built-in security. So fat. Are you because, sure? Yes, because fat files are no with no security. Yes. We, ju we just read about it. Exactly. We just read it, right? Okay, and Juman, next next questions for you. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yes, seventeen. You need to prepare a new yes, seventeen. Your 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 audio is not good at all. Can you hear me? Your audio you is me? is breaking. Can you hear? My sound okay? No, you don't sound yes, okay. Now you hear it's, me. It's breaking. My 
Is that okay? Okay, it's all right. It's okay now. Now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, it's okay now. Oh. Okay. Uh, <coughs> 17, yes. you need to... Yes. 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 Uh, you need to prepare a new replacement hard, hard drive for a storage. What is the first step needed to get it ready? A. Okay. Format the devices, install an OS, install a file system, create a uh, partition. Uh, I think uh, it create a partition. All right, well, let's see that. So this is a, a new hard drive, right? A new hard drive. Your hard drive is... Um, a or D. I think to format the drive or D, number D, create a partition. All right, so let's talk about, let's look at that uh, for a second here. Yes. So a hard drive, right? A hard drive on your computer. If your hard drive is bad and you need to get a new hard drive, right? On your computer, a new hard drive. So let's see what it says here. Um, let's see what it says about hard drives. Go away. All right, so let's see about hard drives here. Yes. Okay, disk management. Okay, so look at this part here, right, Anjuman? Before a hard drive can store data, it needs to be prepared, right? You need to prepare the hard drive and the first step is to create a partition, right? A partition. So uh, right here, yes. Yes. a partition, right? A partition is basically, uh, let's see how it describes it here. Yes. It's like you have different, um, it's like different rooms in a house. Right, different rooms in a house, sort of. I also you have the bathroom. That, so. You have the um, you have the bathroom. You have the bedroom. You have the living room. You have, you know, depends on the size of the house. So a partition is when you have different sections of a hard drive, right? Different sections, sort of, right, of a hard drive. So right here, it says a hard drive can have multiple. Um, multiple partitions, multiple sections of the hard drive. Okay? Multiple sections of the hard drive. For example, um, on your computer, you may, not have, you may not have many partitions. Uh, generally, a partition, let's see, right here, your partitions will be your drives, the different drives you have. Okay? So generally, you have just one drive. But some computers may have multiple drives. Uh, here's an example. Multiple hard drive partitions. So let's see. Uh, let's see what we can find here. Just to give you an example. Okay, right here is an example. Okay. Here might be an example 
right? You might have a computer that has various partitions, right? You might have a E drive, an F drive, a G drive, right? Most of us have just one drive, right? One partition. And Juman is frozen. Um, but when you look at your when you look at your hard drive, you can see um, the partitions that you have, right? So some computers, like I said, may have multiple partitions. And if you have multiple partitions, you're going to see them listed on your computer. Okay. So back to that. So back to that topic there mm. of partitions. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Juman, did you hear what we said about partitions? Uh, your connection is not very good. Okay. Well, we've got to move on. We're almost out of time. So back to the question. About, and Juman, are you there? Okay, we can hear you, and Juman, your connection is not very good, maybe? Uh, yes. Okay, so, so we're talking about partitions. Some computers uh -huh. have multiple partitions, right? And some, you know, some don't. So, so back to the question. So back to the question. I'm here, I hear you. I can hear you. So the answer is what? For 17. Okay. Okay. Now we. Yes, is what? What's the first step needed to get it ready? May you want to take that? Yeah, it's B. Create a partition. Create a partition. Exactly. Create a partition. What you want to? D. You want to use the hard drive, you uh, create I, I a think, partition. I think uh, 17 gig. Okay, next question, question 18. Uh, let's see. Alex, you want to do question 18? Can you hear me? You need to update a Windows driver for a sound card. Which yes, utility sorry. should you use? Space manager, sound card. Card manager, drivers app, control panel, uh, sound card driver. I don't really know about what this one. Is. You don't know what drivers are? Yeah. Okay. So let's see drivers. Let's see drivers. Drivers. We we're talking about drivers before, right? I think. Drivers? No. Alex, we talk about drivers, right? You're right. trying to talk to somebody else in a different language, and somebody else is going to do what? Interpreter, right? Right. So right here, it says, um, to talk to the hardware, operating systems use specialized programs called device drivers, right? A driver tells the operating system how to talk to the specific piece of hardware and how to use its features, right? A driver. So let's see um, how we deal with drivers here. So it says it right here also, right? A driver is an extremely specific application. Uh, its job is to instruct or to tell the operating system how to, you know, deal with the hardware. Maybe like a printer. You install a printer, the uh, driver has to be installed. The job of the driver is to tell the operating system how to work with that device. It's like instructions. Okay, it's like instructions. So uh, let's see something here about drivers. So 
on your computer, if you do a search for driver, driver, right? When you do a search for driver on your computer, you're going to see device manager. Do you see this? Uh, you see this panel here, couch? You see this on your computer? When you do a search, when you type driver, yes. what is this window called? Device see that there? Device manager. Device manager. Mm -hmm. So all the, all the devices, right? All the hardware on your computer are mm -hmm. referred to as devices mm -hmm. on, your, on your computer. They're all devices. Your audio, uh, your audio, your computer, your disk drives, your, your keyboards, mm -hmm. your mouse your monitor, um, your, your network adapters, your Wi-Fi, your printer, all the devices on your computer that make your computer functional are referred to as devices, right? So let's say, for example, your printer wasn't working properly. You will go into this device manager and you will say, for example, okay, I have a Samsung M2020 series. Mm -hmm. So I right click there. Now, uh, Couch, when I right click, what are the options here? Update driver. You, see, you can update, update the driver. Update. So if I click on update, if I click on update the driver, right, then it's going to search for drivers or, or you know, maybe I have to go online and find the driver, mm -hmm. right? But all the hardware on your computer is listed here yeah. in the device manager. And that's where you manage the drivers. You can update the driver. You can disable. If you don't want to use it anymore, yeah. you can just disable it. Yeah. You can uninstall it if you want. You can uninstall the device. Yeah. So you find that on the device manager, whether it's the printer or it's for your mouse or your monitor, whatever the device is, they're all called devices. And you find the drivers there. All right, so Alex, back to that question. Uh, the question what? Question 18. 18. Yeah, device manager, definitely. Device manager, right? The control panel doesn't have any of that stuff. The control panel is just where you, you get directions to go to other places on your computer. It's like, you know, it's like a like a control center, control panel. You can go to system and security. You can go to your hardware. It's like it takes you to different information on your computer, the control panel. So the device manager is where you get that information. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, number 19. Let me see who's been hiding here. Abu Syed. Yes, sir. Is your, is your audio good? Can you yes. try number 19? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, 19. Which of the following would not be considered uh, metadata for a spreadsheet file? Okay, first of all, do you remember what metadata is? We uh, talked about it before. What is metadata? File information. File information, right? So, for example, if I go into a file, let's say I have a file here on my computer. I have um, some images here. Okay, actually, those project files we created the other day. So if I go here, if I want to know the metadata of this file, I right click on the file and I go to properties, right, Abu Said, and this is the metadata. The metadata tells you things like the type of file a PDF file, right? How you can open the file with Adobe Acrobat, the location of the file on your computer, where can you find the file, okay? The size of the file, uh, when you created the file, when you modified the file, is it a read-only, you know, read-only? That is, you don't, want, you don't want anyone to make any changes, right, Abu Sayed? Just read it. So, all this is metadata for that file. You understand? We talked about this before, the metadata. So the question is, 
which of the following will not be considered metadata for a file? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do it this way. Is, let's do it this way. Is the file size part of metadata? Uh, file size? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes? Okay, so in this example, do you see file size here? Hello, hello, guys. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I say this is uh, 57.6 so, kilo, yes. kilobytes. So the file size. So that's not the answer. What of name of the file is that metadata the name of the file yes yes the project 3 pdf absolutely the name of the file has to be what of the calculations inside the file like all the stuff in the file like you know whatever we have in the file the file maybe we put some names there we put some information about the class are you going to see that there the stuff inside the file are you going to see it there no no. No? No. What, what of a read-only attribute? Yes. yes. Read-only, yes. like this option here. Yeah. Like you, like, like you don't want anyone to make any changes to the file. You can just read it, but don't make any changes. Right? So, Abu Sayed, what's the what's the best answer here? Uh, read-only. What? The question is, which of the following will not be, not be considered, doesn't belong? I'm sorry, do you see this here? Yeah, read only. Yes, yeah, so read, uh, read only is part of better data. So try again. B. Yeah. Abu Sayed, try again. B for banjo. A. Abu Sayed. Yeah, B, B. The calculate. B. Yeah, the calculations inside the file, we don't know what that is until we open up the file. Right? So metadata is read only when it was created the size the location the file name and all that stuff okay all right last question ling which of the following oss the us is the nt kernel kernel nt mm -hmm. nt kernel Mm -hmm. So let's see NT. Let's look for NT kernel here. NT. What is NT? NT. All right, NT. Okay, right there. So uh, it says Microsoft uh, worked on a server based operating system called Windows NT. NT means what? New technology. New technology. New technology. Right? Or somebody else, look at this here. Here's the other option. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> right? Um, so the Windows NT, Windows NT, uh, uh, right here says, Windows NT using the 32-bit Windows NT kernel was launched in 1993. Right? Yeah. So you guys have to review this book. You know, when we're done with class, we can't go into every line in the book. So you have to take time to review the book. Right? Well, I'm just I'm trying to give you guys just guidelines of the major areas. Or you have to you have to dive deeper into the book, but right there it says Windows New Technology and NT using the 32-bit Windows NT kernel was launched in 1993. Right, 
Uh, let's see if we can find some more info about NT here. Uh, okay, so right here it says, look at that, uh, Lane. It says, from Windows XP, right on, all Microsoft operating systems use the Windows NT kernel. They all do. Okay? So when you, so you have to review the book. Uh, we have information here about Chrome. So you want to read a little bit about Chrome operating system. Chrome was developed by Google. Okay, the Chrome operating system was developed by Google. Uh, we also have uh, the different Chrome versions. That's right, they don't have a lot of Chrome versions right now. Um, they don't have a lot of Chrome versions at all. But we remember that the Chrome is used, um, you know, everything is stored in the cloud on the Chrome, on the Chrome operating system. Uh, like we said, uh, the Linux operating system have uh, distributions like Red Hat, Ubuntu, Debian, uh, stuff like that. Um, Mac, uh, what's the Mac operating system? Uh, let's go there. Uh, one second, we're going to wrap this up now. Okay, so so the different Mac operating systems, right? I think we looked at it the other day, right? So Mac um, have very interesting names, okay? All their names are like animals, cheetah, the puma, jaguar, panther, tiger, leopard, right? But after a while, they switch to locations in California, from what I understand, right? So Yosemite here, El Capitan, the Sierra Valley. Uh, anybody been to the Sierra Valley in California? Yeah. Sam, have you ventured out that far? No, I've never been there. No. no. Yeah. Um, have you? So all that is in. Uh, no, I've seen pictures though. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to California. I've been to Texas. Um, yeah, I haven't gone. I haven't actually been to the West Coast. Ah. You know, always on the East Coast, uh, Maryland, Florida, I mean, Maryland, Delaware, um, Texas. I haven't gone to that side, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so all the names before were all animal names, and now they moved them to names in California, okay? Then you have Windows versions, right? Windows versions, uh, Windows 95, uh, these are the servers, right? So... Make, take some time to look at the different um, operating systems, mobile and uh, computer, and I think that uh, we'll be all set with this chapter. Okay. Uh, let's do the attendance, and uh, let's see if you guys have any questions. And you can, well, the uh, you can look the at the answer. Question. Oh, what, oh, did we answer it? Oh, okay, what's the answer? So which are the following... OS is used anti kernel. Windows. Oh. Windows. Windows 10. 10. Yeah. Windows. All the windows after XP use anti kernel. The nice try kernel. Right? Okay, so let's do the attendance and let's look at, you can look at the assignment and see if you have any questions. You know, the assignment is right there. So go to Canvas and let's look at it. Okay, I gotta go. Thanks. Okay, have a good day, Sam. All right, so go to uh, Canvas and see if you can see the assignment and if you have any questions for me. Is that cable? Is it cable? Uh, let's see if it's cable. Is it cable? Let's see. Nope. Nope. <laughs> no, not, not correct. Oh. Cross. 
What run? Yeah. How about pass? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Pass. Bus. Go and catch the bus and go to Star Market. Oh my God! I put it on. Why? You don't. You shouldn't answer it until you know the answer for sure. Ah, uh, how can I make? How can? I, how can? I fix it. Well, that means that Lynn wasn't here today. You didn't attend oh, class. No. no. Lynn yeah. missed the class today. She was absent. Oh. Send me an email. I'll fix it for you. Oh. Send me an email. I'll fix it for you, right? Oh, uh, how can I say it? How? Lynn, you don't know how to send email. Yeah, I know your email, but uh, I, I just tell me you made a tell me you made a mistake on the attendance. All right. So, any questions with the any questions with the assignment? Did you see the assignment there, Arch? Do you see the assignment? Yeah, I saw. Okay. Let me see. June, okay. June yes, there are only twenty questions or twenty-one questions, but some of the questions have a lot of points. Oh, so make yes. sure you pay attention. Some questions have four points, three points, two points. So, so do a great job. Okay, that's all I got. If you have no questions, you're free to log off, and I will talk to you guys next week. Okay, see you next. All right, week. thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. Take care. Thank you. Have a great weekend. All right, you too.